So this last weekend was one of the most disappointing losses that we've seen in modern history of the Browns. And I think that the big issue coming out of this game was the reaction from the player, specifically Miles Garrett. Now, Miles comes out in his press conference and says that he was mostly disappointed. His biggest disappointment was the booing at the end of the game. So I want to go through this with you and let's see it together and I'll give you my thoughts. Oh. It, I mean, the more disappointing thing was the booing at the end. It was a, you know, not the most optimal ending that we'd want. You know, we, of course, we'd want to win. Of course, we want to play out the game and, you know, it end 30 16 or 30 17, whatever so it was. We. You know, we get a, uh, a pick or a strip sack and end the game. But that's not always how it goes. You know, these guys are still putting their asses on the line and playing. Unless you're the Jets, they, they got to pick the end They should be respected as such. It's it's two games. So putting so th th I understand and we do respect you. We respect you to the point where we come out there and cheer for you, right? I mean, we respect everybody on this team, and we love all the players on the team. We support them. We celebrate them. We talk about them. We wear your jerseys. We do all the stuff. Right, we respect the players, but when you give up 14 points in a minute and 30 to a team that is considered to be widely considered to be one of the worst teams in the NFL, and you allow a 37 year old quarterback to throw for over 300 yards on you with four touchdowns, no interceptions, and with a passer rating of that's nearly perfect, that's disappointing. When you have the game essentially won with a minute 30 and they have no timeouts. Now, you can't blame it all on the defense because the special teams absolutely failed us as well. We missed an extra point, which is, again, continues to happen. It doesn't matter what kicker we have. We're missing extra points. And this one led to a loss. And then not having the ability to cover on the onside kick. It resulted in a situation we had to put the defense back on the field. But the defense did it to themselves. Go out when when we scored that touchdown to go up and eventually up 13 points. There's a 99.9% chance we're going to win the game. 0.1% chance that you lose and you figured out how to do that. At that point, that's why the booze came in. It's not that we don't respect you. It's not that we don't want to root for you, but that's what it is. Let's continue. Games and you know, we have plenty more games to play, especially this next one coming up in front of the, you know, the home crowd. And you know, we have a lot of time to correct what we're doing. I mean, I get it that it's week two and you have time to correct what it's doing. And honestly, like, I'm glad it happened in week two and it didn't happen like in the playoffs. My God. But to say we have a lot of time, I mean, the season's not that long. And you have a game four days later. You're going to correct an issue that you've had since the beginning of the season in four days? I don't know how you can do that, but let's. You, apparently you feel like you got plenty of time to do it, which is that sense of urgency just doesn't seem to be there. It's us, it's that, it's us, it's with us as fans, we get it, but the players apparently don't have that sense of urgency. Continue on. So, I don't, we don't want to see uh, this this crowd, this uh, this stadium give up on us. No. Then don't give up on yourselves, and don't give up on us as fans. You gave up. With a minute 30 left, you gave up. That's why you, that's the only way you give up 14 points in a minute 30 with no timeouts to a geriatric quarterback and less talent on that field than the vast majority of teams you're going to face this year. The way that happens is when you give up, not us. This early, we want to see them you know, completely behind us. And you no, know, it's disappointing for everybody, but it's absolutely disappointing for, for us as a team just knowing that, you no. Know, we were disappointed for everybody as well because I understand you guys are the players and it matters to you because it's your team. At the end of the day, you guys win a Super Bowl, you guys get rings. We don't get rings. You guys get game checks. We don't get game checks. In fact, we provide the resources to make those game checks happen, right? So we understand that you as a team are disappointed, but you're the only ones who can control that. We cannot. I can't go out there and play, and even if I could, I'm 5'9", a buck nothing. I'm Rudy. I'm old Rudy. I can't even go out there if I wanted to, right? You guys control the outcomes of the game. 
You guys fell asleep. There was lack of focus, lack of communication. And ultimately, now we're getting into it, and it doesn't seem like anybody's even truly feeling accountable for what happened. It's an all shucks, we'll learn from it. We got plenty of time. You know, the sky's not falling, which maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We'll see on Thursday, though. We'll be all we'll all be watching. So if it happens Thursday and you guys lose, you lose anything close to this, all hell's gonna break loose. I guarantee you that, Miles. Let's continue. We had them you know, with uh with our foot on their throat and we didn't finish them. And that's completely on us. And that's another thing. You have the foot on the throat. You're up 13 points. You should have been up 14, but you have 13 points with a minute 30. And and that's the other thing. That's the culture here. You think the Kansas City Chiefs would do that? The Kansas City Chiefs won a game in the playoffs with 13 seconds left. You gave a team that should have no chance to make the playoffs this year. You gave them a minute 30 with no timeouts and still figured out a way to lose. That's the difference. And you know, we, we learn from this and we correct it and come back stronger. So, in this case, God, I hope so. Because if you don't learn from it, because you didn't learn from it week one to week two, the 75-yard broken coverage touchdown to Robbie Anderson that let the Panthers back into the game, which you almost lost. You were almost 0-2. So it didn't it didn't get fixed from one week to the other. So we're just going to believe that it will be fixed four days after week two. So you yeah, you have a lot of learning to do. There's a lot to do there. So let's go and take a look at what the voice of the Browns, Jim Donovan, had to say about it and get his perspective. I have nothing to say about that debacle uh. yesterday because that was a debacle. That's a debacle. What you watched was a total collapse. The worst loss I have ever seen them take since I've been watching them, okay, and certainly doing their games. So, I mean, did Jim Donovan not watch them in the 80s because... Man, I got to tell you, the f drive, the fumble, or even... Yeah, I mean, those are the two big ones, the drive and the fumble. Those are the two most disappointing games, I think, in Cleveland Browns history, and I, I don't think it's even close. This one this one is the most disappointing in recent history. <laughs> Let's continue. And I know they had one back in Chicago at Soldier Field back in 2001, and yeah, that was bad, but they were a young team then. They were on the road then, and it was ugly. There's no doubt about it. There were... But I think the thing is, they have expectations now. So it's not just about, hey, you're you're barely you're barely into your junior year, um, or soft yeah, junior year, I guess, as a as a franchise coming back in the league, and so there wasn't expectations there to win. Now there's expectations, and I got to tell you, I don't care what you are, you're up you're up 13 points. Should have been 14, but off 13 points with a minute and a half, no timeouts left. You win that game. You figure it out. There's one in New England, too, that they kind of left mm -hmm. off the hook at one time when they didn't recover an onside kick, and Tom Brady came back and got him. But you were at home, okay? You were at home with a 13-point lead, and the there. Jets had no timeouts left to go with a minute 55 left to go. It is inexcusable what happened there yesterday. My only fear is that we're coming down the wire, all right, and we're in deep December. And all of a sudden, on those network pregame shows, they show those columns of division leaders in the hunt, out of it, okay, for <laughs> the playoff chase. And maybe we're at the bottom of the in the hunt, and we're saying, oh, we need this game Sunday, and we need the Bengals to lose. Instead of we could have just needed a minute 55. And I'm going to say to myself, and you're going to say it too at some point, yeah, but we had that game. We had that one in September. We had that one. Every game, there's only... There, there's only 17 games. There's 17 weeks in football, right? Where you're playing 17 games now. It's still weird that we play 17, not 16, but it's 17 games, okay? Everyone matters. In in baseball, you can give up a, a game. You can give up... A, you can give up a whole series of games. You can, you can get swept and still win the World Series. It's not a problem. You can't do that in football. Every game is critical, and what Jim is saying is 100% true. They expected to get cheered when they walked off the field yesterday? Mm. Uh, with what happened in the last minute 55 look here's my point to miles garrett or any of the other players that felt 
um, that they were really harpooned by the fans because of the booing yesterday. All right. Um, you're looking for a one sided relationship always. And, and that, this is where it's going to get really I love his point here because, you know, you sit there and you go, we don't we, we you guys can't boo us. What about last year? What about when we were booing the offense when Baker was out there? You didn't see the defensive players coming to the rescue and saying, you know what? You guys shouldn't be booing our offense. We're all a team. We're all in this together. You know, blah, blah. They, they, they didn't come out and support the offense when they were getting booed. So now all of a sudden they're getting booed because they give up 14 points in less than two minutes. And they don't like how that feels, do they? Okay. You ask them to come to the game and they come to the game. I was you asked them to fill that stadium, they fill the stadium, even fill through it. bad years. You ask them to be loud, and I can tell you, and I think Gerard can back but me we up, Tony's you know, hermetically sealed in the press box. I couldn't hear myself think in there yesterday. It was loud. You ask them to buy their jerseys, and they do. You ask them to be active on social media to get everybody revved up to the game, and they break social media getting ready for a big game. You ask them to come to the stadium early. Saturday night, I'm driving down to do the... I mean, I, 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 he's preaching. This is literally the church of Jim Donovan right now. Legends dinner for Joe Thomas down at the stadium. And there were cars lined up at 5 o'clock on Saturday to get into the Muni lot for Sunday morning. When you ask them to... Hayden Grove did a, a cool video on that. So you check it out. He's 100% true. I was at the stadium... Pro shop the night before, like where it was closing around four thirty five o'clock, and then Hayden's Hayden's post came out on Twitter, where they were lined up, people were lined up, excited to to, to go to the home opener. Do all of that, they get to do whatever they want. Okay, it's a one sided relationship when all you want are cheers. You know what? If you were a Broadway show, <laughs> after that performance yesterday, it would have been canceled today. You know what the funny thing is, I. Don't, even if you look at Madden, I, I, can you get booed in Madden? I gotta, I gotta talk to Mike McFadden and figure figure that out. But I can, I, I bet you, you'd get booed in a video game if that happened. Okay, so Jim Donovan, that he makes a really good point. So I think all in all, everybody, I'm disappointed by what Miles said. I don't know if he meant to phrase it the way that he phrased it. Maybe it just came out. Maybe he was saying, look, we we understand that we're the ones responsible for the booze, but it sure didn't feel good. And wh that's what he should have said. It didn't feel good to get booed. We felt horrible for the way it went down. We tried our best, and it felt awful to be booed, but we understand how passionate the fans are. We understand that they care so much about this, and they let us know that it was unacceptable, the outcome of that football game. And we're gonna we're gonna hold ourselves accountable for this. We're gonna be smart, tough, and accountable moving forward. And we're gonna hold ourselves accountable. And that is what we want. We don't want finger pointing. We don't want aw shucks. We don't want, well, we got plenty of time to get this all figured out. We want it figured out now. If you want to have fans in the stadium cheering for you and being excited for you, then let's get this thing figured out. And we'll go from there. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, do all the stuff, and leave me a comment. Let me know, am I off base here, or do you feel the same way? I'd love to hear from you. All right, everybody, thanks for watching, and go Browns.